Yo, what is going on you guys? So today I'm bringing guys a brand new sports cards video. In today's video, I will be discussing the national sports card show that will be going down next month in Chicago. Um, of course, there's going to be a lot of people there. There's a lot of momentum. Ever since the whole sports card boom, there has not been a national show as it was canceled last year. Um, so overall, you know, this is a very you know, hype time in the sports card market, in the sports card hobby in general. Um, and it's obviously going to have the biggest turnout of any show we've probably ever seen. Um, so let us know if you guys are coming down below in the comment section. But I will be discussing some tips that you guys should definitely know before heading into Chicago for the show next month. Um, so firstly, I want to say if you guys are looking to sell your cards for cash, um, you should definitely consider showing up as early as possible. And that is simply because a lot of people are going to be selling their cards, I assume. Um, if the market is still the same as it is right now, um, a lot of people are going to be selling their cards and not as many people are going to be buying with cash. Um, so a lot of competition is going to be after people who have cash. Um, so a lot of people are going to be trying to sell cards to people with cash. We saw this in last uh, month's Dallas show, um, a lot of the cash was spent on the first day because there were so many sellers competing for the buyer's cash. Um, so I assume if the market stays the same, it's going to be very similar. So if you do want to get cash for your cards, you want to show up as early as possible, find those cash buyers, give them solid fair prices, and you will likely get sales. Because I know a lot of people who are coming into the national with a you know, with a budget essentially. Um, and their budget could be gone within the first day, within the first three hours, who knows? Um, so a lot of people are gonna be looking for cards to buy and you know, there's gonna be, I assume, a lot of sellers. So you wanna definitely, if you're selling, be there as early as possible. Um, and I also wanna talk a little bit about trade value um, because I've got a lot of questions about how do I value you know, certain cards in trade? And so firstly, you know, it depends on the liquidity of the card and how in demand the card is. Um, so for example, LeBron James Topps Chrome PSA 10, that is extremely liquid. There's a lot of buyers, it's very in demand. If that card right now is going for around 13 to 14,000, if you are valuing that in trade, you would likely ask for 15,000 trade. At least I would. Um, and that is simply because it's a lot more liquid. It's a lot easier to move than a lot of the other cards you would likely tr be trading for. Um, and it's, a, you know, in demand, right? There's a lot of price movements going on. And in general, there's a lot of people who want the card. And that is why it would be valued higher in trade value. Um, I know there's a lot of people who try to value their cards in trade a little bit too high. I tend to stick to, you know, if it's an in demand sought after card like, you know, LeBron or a Kobe or MJ, I would price it around 10 to 15% over what you would ask for in cash. Um, so I think that's a solid rule of thumb. Um, and if you're trading for cards and you have a bigger card like a Michael Jordan Fleer PSA 10 that everyone wants, and that is a very expensive card and you're trading for smaller cards, you're gonna wanna ask premium value because it's gonna be a lot harder to move all, all of those cards. Um, so you definitely wanna play things smart. Certain cards are better to be traded. Certain cards are not, you know, as good to be traded, such as harder cards to move and collector's cards. Um, so definitely keep that in mind. Um, but also, you know, another strategy that I personally am going in with is always keeping in the back of my mind the fact that you can flip cards across the room. Um, if you see a good deal that's too hard to, you know, I would say too hard to pass on, right? Um, go ahead, buy that card. If it's an in-demand card, you know, if, for example, LeBron's around 13 to 14K. If somebody's out there selling it for 11.5 or 12,000 cash, you could buy that and probably go to the other side of the room and find a buyer who's willing to pay 12.5 or 13K and make a quick margin right there. Um, because I'll tell you, there's gonna be a lot of people looking for certain cards there's going to be a lot of collectors, a lot of people looking to buy, um, you know, even if you get trade value, right? If you're buying a card for 12,000 cash, you go with that LeBron and get 15,000 trade. That is a quite solid move if you ask me. Um, so I think it's very smart if you're always keeping an eye out because you can always buy cards on one side of the room, go to the other side of the room. You can go try to find panic sellers. 
you know, offer them a little bit lower than, or say, offer them 20% under eBay. If they say yes, go to the other side of the room, but go ahead, sell to a motivated buyer and a motivated buyer could potentially pay market price and you can make a 20% margin. Um, so that's definitely a strategy that I will be going in with. Um, and I think it's personally a very good strategy that I have had great success with in the past. Um, and also if you're just looking to buy cards, if there's a card, for example, that you know, you're trying to collect or that you're trying to invest in, you know, I would wait till the national to buy that. Um, just because you're going to get under eBay prices because the sellers are able to sell, save on seller fees. Um, so you definitely want to wait till the national, I would say, unless there's some sort of urgent situation. Um, so I think the national is overall going to be a very good time to buy. Um, I think there's a lot of, you know, gonna, there are going to be a lot of great deals, I feel. A lot of great opportunities um, in the market in general. Um, but at the national, you can get very good deals if you just make offers. Um, I would not be afraid to make offers this time, especially in a market that's quite soft. Um, you know, if you see a seller with the card that you want, you know, I would start low um, and work your way up to your highest price because you'll be surprised how many people are selling cards way under market right now. Um, and you can definitely capitalize off of that if you be aggressive um, when buying cards. Um, but also, you know, I would say bring your collector's cards if you're looking to move them. That is probably the best place to sell to collectors, you know, at these sports card shows, because a lot of collectors, you know, even longtime collectors, people getting back into the market and just trying to collect cards, you know, they're out at these shows, just having a great time. And they are going to be most likely to pay the highest dollar. If they have, a, if they're looking for a card for their collection that you have, and maybe only you have in, you know, the whole show, you can get top dollar for that card. So definitely, even if you have a little quirky cards, um, you know, cards that may, you know, not even sell on eBay, would not sell on Instagram or Facebook, you will likely be able to find a buyer at the National. With the amount of people who are going to be there, with the amount of money people are walking in with, I think it's very smart to bring along your collector's cards and try to find a collector who's looking for that exact card or whose PC is of that player. And you can definitely make great money if you can find those perfect buyers. Um, that's what I call them, perfect buyers, the buyer that would pay top dollar for your card, um, and there's a good chance you're going to find that at the National. Um, and then another thing is just have a strategy. That's the main thing. Um, you know, know what you're looking to do when you walk in, because otherwise you're going to get carried away. You're going to see a card of your dreams, and you're likely going to maybe overpay for it. You're maybe going to be tempted with cash um, if you see cash flashed at you. For a card um, but overall have a strategy know what you're doing never act in the moment because I know at these card shows it gets very exciting a lot of people get very excited and are just you know trying to splurge or trying to sell for low values because they want cash um, or they get tempted but I highly recommend that all of you guys you know have a strategy stay calm and just kind of act in that way because that's when you get the best deals um, and that's when you get top dollar as a seller. Never be overly, you know, I would say be aggressive when buying. But as a seller, try to stay away and let the buyer try to come to you. I think that's really when I've got top dollar selling a card is when I just let the buyer kind of negotiate with himself, I would say. Um, so if a buyer is, you know, at say you're asking price is 15K, um, the buyer is at 10K, you know, it, if you just stay at 15, chances are, firstly, the buyer is coming in at a lower value than he would potentially go up to. Um, so you never want to be throwing out numbers. Um, for example, if you're like, okay, let's settle at 12. Well, all of a sudden he has the leverage. And now rather than between 10 and 15, it's now the deal is going to happen between 10 and 12K and he can try to get you even lower. Um, so it's better to always stay at your price and let the buyer come up as you decline his offers. I would definitely say that's something I've learned over the last few months and it's really worked for me. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys are going down to the national, drop a like on this video, comment down below um, what you guys are most excited about because I know it's going to be a blast. Um, but see you guys all there. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'm out. Peace.